begin with just its appearance. This powerful, self-propelled, American-built, single-level diesel multiple unit, DMU, is sleek and smooth when speeding at 90 miles per hour down the tracks, or in both the single and double deck versions when standing still taking on passengers at a commuter rail station. Whether used for new short-run inner-city commuter routes, for creating a network of existing commuter services, or for low-density, long-distance touring, the DMU gives a remarkably quiet ride but creates quite a buzz wherever it stops. Well, the rail car of the future visited Salt Lake City today. UTA hosted a demonstration of a self-propelled commuter rail car it hopes will become the transportation system of tomorrow. UTA is exploring the possibility the new technology will become one day part of uh, future projects along the Wasatch Front. South Florida Tri-Rail is now operating with some new wheels. Take a look here. The new coach doesn't give off as much pollution as current locomotives and can carry up to 18% more passengers than Tri-Rail's existing coaches. Officials say the increased space will help with the expected growth in passengers. Jeffrey Hope is in to tell us about what may be the future of commuter rail service in Alaska. Unlike its big brother locomotives, the car moves in both directions. The railroad has cars that do that now, but they're aging. And with improving technology, the new car has advantages. It can pull up to three passenger cars and is more fuel efficient. Mike and Bertha, take a look at this. It's the first of its kind. It's a diesel engine locomotive that can seat yeah, nearly 90 passengers. 92 seated passengers to be exact, and that's just the single level car. The new double deck DMU, more than twice that number, 188 seats. As you can see here during independent tests with the South Florida Regional Transportation Authority, the DMU, and this is true whether single level or double deck, the DMU can pull one or even two more unpowered passenger coaches, which Colorado Rail Car also builds. And everything, powered or unpowered, single level or double deck, everything is designed and engineered to run on existing mixed use freight tracks. The economics couldn't be better. They basically say to a commuter agency is you can start a commuter service without buying a railroad or paying a fortune to a railroad to get exclusive use of their rail and you don't have to go electrify it at two or three million dollars a mile you can just buy this car put up some stations build some parking lots and start a commuter service Look at these comparisons of capacity, cost, and benefit from just a few of the agencies that have independently analyzed Colorado Rail Cars DMU. The South Florida RTA looked at the DMU versus commuter cars hauled by a locomotive. It ran the DMU test on a 144-mile round trip, including 18 stops, pulling two conventional double-deckers every inch of the way. Its conclusion, the DMU consumed 128 gallons of fuel, their locomotive 325 gallons. That's 60% better fuel mileage for the DMU, saving 600 gallons per day on three round trips. The DMU also emitted far fewer pollutants and ran four times quieter than a locomotive hauled train set while carrying 18% more passengers, which translates to thousands more commuters during the peak rush. RTA's chief mechanical officer, Brad Barkman, said it was one of the best test runs I've been on in my career. In Alaska, the DMU was put to the ultimate test of power by the Alaska Railroad. While pulling a second car south of Anchorage, it climbed a 3% grade, then stopped in the middle, shut off one engine, and successfully resumed its climb, one of the steepest in North America. In Nevada, the Las Vegas Regional Transportation Commission, comparing DMU service to electrified light rail, found that the capital cost of infrastructure for light rail is 74% higher than for the DMU. The light rail vehicle requires what I call an extension cord. And that extension cord, to keep it operational, runs about $5 million a mile. And when you start adding up 40 miles, that adds a lot to your front end cost of the vehicle. With this vehicle, we can use existing tracks and, and have it operational virtually overnight. The trick is, whether a single or double level DMU, this is the first commuter car that, unlike heavy rail, needs no locomotive. But unlike light rail, meets the FRA's new rules for structural safety. How? 
heavy sidewall steel tube construction built with survivable passenger space to withstand the force of collision with an 18-wheel truck. We did a lot of studying and uh, did some, some creative work there to, uh, to design a structure that could be very crash worthy, yet uh, light enough that it's not too expensive in terms of fuel to, to move around. That's thanks to a pair of Detroit diesel engines. This is a uh, Detroit Diesel Series 60 engine. Uh, one of, it's our most popular on-highway truck engine. So the beauty of this system is it's using the most popular industrial engine that we make. Two drivetrains, 1,200 horsepower, independently generated heating and air conditioning and electricity, all easily reachable and maintainable through access hatches along the bottom of each car. And inside, an ADA-compatible wheelchair restroom and wheelchair tie-downs. Options for vinyl, fabric, or leather bench commuter seats or individual bucket seats. And the windows, flat side glass, or this, Colorado Rail Car's patented panoramic glass dome. Colorado Rail Car has done the heavy lifting for 18 years now, creating top-quality single and double-deck rail cars for some of the most luxurious lines in North America which means they didn't have to reinvent the DMU to come up with a double-deck version. They just had to add a second story to the single-level car. If there is the problem on the car, which is normal that there are problems, uh, they are very cooperative and helpful and always um, do their best to fix the problem. Finally, of course, comes your passenger's comfort. Outside consultants who have ridden this DMU give it high marks. They aim everything at the comfort package and reliability. I like it. I think it's a great vehicle. I'm really wowed by this car. You're in a high-class vehicle. This is very, very reminiscent of the luxury cars that the company builds otherwise. This is a little bit more than the standard light rail with the, with the plastic, cushion, slightly cushioned seat. It is, as the Miami Herald suggested, the train of the future. No locomotives, no electrification, no new tracks. One consultant calls it cordless light rail, the safest, strongest, quietest, most comfortable, most flexible, most powerful self-propelled DMU ever to come down the tracks from Colorado Railcar.